we broadcast at 640. West of the Rockies, you're on the air. Hello. Y2K, how can we prepare? Stop a few of their machines and radios. Throw them into darkness for a few hours. We are fighting for our lives. My family must survive. Boom. For five years, thousand gallons of gas, air filtration, water filtration. Coming at you from the frozen tundra. Well, wait a minute. Maybe not the frozen tundra, but we are back in home of the brave and land of the free or maple syrup, poutine, and Canadian bacon. So we made it, kind of. We're not quite home yet, but we are in Edmonton. But it is as far, as far from frozen as it can possibly get. It is 27 degrees Celsius at 9 o'clock, almost 9 o'clock at night here right now. This is beyond unseasonably warm, which is, I suppose, a very apt way to bookend our trip. Left on the 420 blizzard to come back on whatever today's date is at 27 degrees Celsius. Can you do the conversion on your phone for me, hon? Uh, yeah. That is hot. I, th I think that's as hot as any day we saw in Tennessee, isn't it? I might have gotten mm -hmm. to like 29. I don't know. So we're going to do the conversion for you. But we've been on the road for... Well, today we did it's probably uh, 81. 80, 81 degrees on, what's the date, the 4th, 5th? Uh, May 4th. May 4th, 2023. It is 81 degrees here at 9 o'clock at night. I don't know what the hell's going on. Hell froze over two weeks ago, and now it finally thawed out, but what a mess. And not to mention all the wildfires. Oh, so we've got, what did they say, 40 active wildfires in Alberta? 50. 50. 50. And we've gotten how many notices on our phone about them? So, yeah, about an hour outside of Edmonton, we started getting emergency alerts that there's wildfires all through the place here. Now, typically, they're just small, you know, controlled mm -hmm. blazes, not on purpose, not like they happened on purpose, but they are something they can handle. But it never <laughs> Byron Roberts, may the fourth be with you. Yes, sir. And tomorrow, guys, oh, my little babies turn teenagers. Alice and Charlotte, you know, <laughs> hey, lots project. <laughs> We're quite a few miles from you right now, but here's a couple of interesting thoughts, guys. I get back, we get back to Alberta on what turns out to be the hottest day of our entire trip, no matter where we are, no matter where we have been, and the fastest I drove on the entire trip was today between Calgary and, Alberta, and uh, Edmonton. <laughs> So the highway to there was insane. We got, um, as long as no, um, you know, official people know anyway, we got well <laughs> over 90 miles an hour today, guys. That, and we weren't, there was a couple of times I was like ready to be off the road, but to be honest, we were just going with the traffic in places, weren't we? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like we weren't pulling away from anybody. Uh, yeah, Brian says, well, no, see, Brian, <laughs> I, <laughs> they're not true. I'm not sure you heard what I said. I, I didn't. So, uh, Brian, the Lots Project, just says you have trees in Alberta. No, I didn't say anything about a forest fire. I said a wildfire. And they're always... <laughs> so basically, the old <laughs> dry grass from last fall is burning now. So it's horrible. But yeah, so it's... Yeah, actually, we just got to notice that the highway to go home is closed because of a fire. So we're going to have to go further south to get home. But... Which is going to cause us more time. Yes. So we have not been live. When was our last day live? Did we do any on the road? Yes, we yes. did one uh, just after Omaha? our LFTM. Must, oh, oh, uh, oh, in Gordonsville still, was it? it was or did either, we do it in, mm, anyway? No, it was, so, it was in Omaha. It was in Omaha, okay. Yeah. yeah, or Council Bluffs or whatever. So we had a we had a good time, but we've, we put a lot of miles on. We, yeah, um, we'd have to, I'll do the math later on for you guys, but it's well over 4,000 kilometers, which, if my math's right, must be about 3,000 miles we've driven in Roughly, four, yeah. four days. Yeah, we went to the, what is that, the... Um, the Mount Residential heads on it. Mount Rushmore. Mount Rushmore. Thank you. Since you can tell my brain is not completely working. So I apologize for the quality of the podcast this evening in the last couple because we have been <laughs> on the road. And uh, but I was we're, we're a little burnt out. We are a little under the weather. I mean, tired wise, we're a little burnt out, but it's great. I was not going to miss my Thursday. I have never missed an episode. I don't think I've ever missed a Thursday episode. I don't think and so. I, I knew as soon as we got here, we'd at least fill you in on some of the happenings of the trip. So I got to tell you guys the craziest story of the entire trip. Our Waffle House story, right? Oh, yes. Oh, my God, guys. So I'm going to post a picture later on. Uh, I'll put it on social media tomorrow. 
But here is the story, and I hope you appreciate it because it blew me out of the water. It was pretty funny. It was really funny. So we go in. We, we, we made up our mind the night before when we left Gordonsville that we we're going to get on the road early. We started, what, about five, six o'clock that morning? Yeah. <laughs> you mean that's when you, yeah, that, so you woke it, me up at like 5.30 and you said, let's go. No, that was, was yesterday. So anyway, yeah. so we get up early, we get yeah. on the road. And of course, Becky said, we got to hit you at Waffle House one more time for breakfast before we take off. And of course. Well, and we're going to say why, because we were actually extremely disappointed with the Waffle House in Gordonsville. Yeah, the Gordonsville Waffle which, House was not very good. Which so. really sucks, because last year it was incredible. It was. The, the staff was so good there. Yeah. Goofy Rufy just said, did you see a clip a while ago where the Waffle House worker caught a chair thrown at her? You saw that, baby, did you? No, I didn't Oh, see I'll that. show you they, they said that um, somebody asked one time who would win a fight between the Avengers and the Waffle House staff. And somebody's <laughs> like, are you kidding? Uh, Waffle House? <laughs> yeah, but the, but the Waffle House in Gordonsville last last year at LFTN was incredible. Yeah. The staff was so friendly. They Remember, they gave you a mug and everything. And they were so friendly and they were so helpful and everything. And this year, they... Yeah, it was awful. The, the service was awful. And so, okay, I'm going to try to show you guys this photo. I don't know how well it's going to come out here. I know this is not ideal because we're on the road, but if you can see, this is a picture of Becky and I sitting next to a random old man at Waffle House wearing Waffle House grill hats. Hat. Grill hats, yeah. <laughs> okay, so if you're wondering how in the world that happened, so am I still. But we go in, in Kentucky to Waffle House. We sit down at the the bar, the countertop area. We love it there. And I start making small talk, or I don't know if I started or he started, one or the other. We start talking. So there's me, Becky, and then an old guy sitting in a booth just down the way. He starts talking to me. I'm talking to him. That's where we're coming from. And we just kind of hit it off. And he's he's talking, you know, he's hollering to me through Becky, and I'm laughing at his jokes and carrying on. It's a great time. We talk for 10 or 15 minutes, and we're like, well, we need to hit the road because we needed to make lots of miles that day. So we kept waiting. I'm like, why hasn't she brought us the bill yet? And eventually she finally comes out with it. She's like, um, this is one of those pay it forward things. She said, somebody just paid for your bill and pay it forward. And I'm like, okay. So we decided yeah. we're going to bring the, the pay it forward back with us to Canada. Now, if that was all that happened, cool. Makes for an interesting story. So as we're leaving, I go to say goodbye to my new elderly friend, whom in the back of my head, I thought maybe he paid for it. Mm -hmm. Seemed like a nice guy, 75 years old, owns all kinds of guns, vehicles, farmland, everything. So I go over and I say, hey, just wanted to say thank you very much for a good conversation. And he kind of winks at me. And I said, you paid for that meal, didn't you? And he goes, yeah, yeah, I did. <laughs> I said, okay, cool. Well, um, can, can we take our picture with you for that? You know, and I said, we'll take that back with us to Canada. So I reach out. This is the most insane thing in the entire world, guys, because this is what I do. I meet strangers. I talk to them and I shake their hand. So I reach out. I said, hey, thank you very much. And by the way, what is your name? His name was Jim Cook. <laughs> and my jaw just about hit the floor. Jim Cook. One letter off. 75-year-old dude. This is exactly what I would be at 75. Talking to complete strangers hanging out at the Waffle House. Talking about all his guns and bullets. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, I told him my name was Tim Cook, and he didn't really believe me for a second. He gets his goofy look. The waitresses behind the counter were like, what in the world? What are the... Some random couple stops into Waffle House for 10 minutes, flying through on their way to Omaha from roughly Nashville, and we meet this complete stranger with basically the same name as me. He pays for our breakfast... And I said, can we take a picture with you? And the women are like, they're all blown away that this happened. They pull out these Waffle House hats, put them on all our heads. We snap pictures. He gives me his phone number so I can text him. He invites me to get down and go gun hunting or uh, to gun shooting with him, which was great. And I said, Jim, I got to hit the road. We got to make miles. And so I needed to stop and get some gas. So I pull up to the next gas station a, a couple of blocks away. He sees me pull in. He pulls in right behind me. He says, hey, do you want to save 30 cents a gallon? I'm like, sure. He goes, I'll pay for the gas with my special credit card. You give me cash. He said, I need I need money for lunch anyway. <laughs> so we stand there and talk for another 10 minutes while I'm pumping gas. And it was just the most, 
whatever you believe in, whether you believe in fate or divine inspiration or just dumb ass luck, that was the craziest. And I mean, guys, <laughs> that was the craziest story to happen to us. And this is on the same trip that we met a monkey in Walmart in uh, McDonald's <laughs> drive through. So this was not an uneventful trip. And for this to be the most eventful event of the trip, I don't even know what to say. It was unreal. I, and I don't think he believed you. About my name? Yeah. Oh, I, I think he did eventually, didn't yeah. he? Yeah, Gracie said guardian angel. <laughs> yeah, I. it had to have been. I mean, it. I, I was so flabbergasted. Snow, hey, look at that. There, there we are, Andrea and Russ. Hey, guys, how are you? Snow Farm's okay. Yeah, so it was the, it blew me, it <laughs> it blew me away how incredible it was. I couldn't, yeah, I mean, yeah. it's insane. I. What are the chances of somebody like that figuring it out, right? Or of, of just offering to pay. So now we need to figure out the absolute perfect way to pay it forward, which we won't talk about on here probably because, yes. yeah. Uh, I didn't know he, I didn't have to show him my ID. He didn't no. believe me. I think and he spelled, spelled the name the same, no E. All oh, yeah, anything. because we talked about, yeah. yeah, and then we get talking about, um, our family history. I forgot about that. And I asked him how he spelled his name and we both spell it C-O-O-K, which is, you know, there's three different variations of cook and it was, yeah, absolutely wild. So I didn't, I was like, when I, I wanted to save that story for like a big episode, but I couldn't, <laughs> it just was the stupidest, funniest, craziest thing. All And then once. he gave us yourself. His yeah. Cell phone and number. I got him in my phone and he said, when I'm coming down next time to stop and we shoot guns together. Yeah. <laughs> One of those, big, uh, what did he call them? What did he call it? Uh, he owns a Ma Deuce, so yeah. I was like, okay, he's I can't like, yeah, turn that I, down. I paid like 15,000 for it, now it's worth about 50,000, and the rounds are three dollars and 50 cents a piece. And oh, was it was like, so cool! Yeah. I just, yeah, I oh, anyway, so it was cool. We had, a, we had a blast that part. Uh, went through the border today, so here's another really cool story, guys. We, we like when we shop, we travel, we, we spend yeah. some money. And so well, this is my story. Oh, okay. Go ahead, yeah. baby. You, you tell it. Yeah. So, uh, well, I tell the whole story. So we went through customs and we claimed everything what we do and like in what we spend. And it was. But so, you yeah. know, I also have to claim. So we picked up all of the free shit that companies have sent me over the last yeah, month. We have to claim that. There was 10 products worth well over a grand. So. Yeah. And anyway, we're only we're only allowed sixteen sixteen hundred for two people, um, but I, I really think it's more if it's longer than fourteen days. We're gonna have to look that. No, up. it's not. I've checked. So. Well, she, so he wrote on there, so we'd have we have to pay five percent tax, right, on the difference, which was about two thousand dollars or something like that. It would have been about one hundred and ten dollars, which was yeah. To pay. Yep. So, um, this he couldn't find his wallet. Of course, he thought he lost it at the Montana mailbox, and we thought we were going to have to go back through customs to get it. So I told myself, well, you let me go in and pay while you find your wallet. And I go in there, and I give her the little yellow slip, and she looks at me, and she goes, and she goes, well, this is how much you spent. And I said, yeah, it was about 3900 or whatever, right? And that was with your parcels and stuff. And she goes, but, she goes, but only for bourbon. And I'm like, well, yeah, bourbon and some other stuff. And then she goes and she looks at a screen. She goes, well, what lane did you go through? And I said, lane two. And she goes, but you only bought bourbon. And I'm like, well, no. Because I literally handed you yeah. the entire <laughs> list of everything And I said, bought. no, we bought other stuff. And she goes, nah, you only bought bourbon. And she, she rips it up. She goes, have a good day. <laughs> Didn't have to pay a cent. I know. I, anyway, yeah. so for whatever reason, we had so much fun, but yeah. so we didn't have to pay the extortion fee that, I mean, whatever, right? No, she I, says to have a good day, ripped it up in front of me, and she says, enjoy your drive. Yeah, it was crazy. So, yeah. So I didn't have to pay anything, so that was nice. Yeah, I loved it. We we went to, so uh, Aaron, if you're still out there, we went to Mount Rushmore, and inside there, <clears throat> I had actually planned on taking some pictures, and I need to apologize. They had some of the little house on the prairie pictures, uh, books from, uh, there was like, I forget. Anyway, I meant to tell you, Aaron. So if you're listening out there, guys, this sounds like a really cool book. There is a collection of Laura Ingalls Wilder, or Wild, the lady who wrote the book, her personal letters that she wrote to other people. They've compiled them in a book. I saw it there in the gift shop. So it might be something you want to read to your kids, Aaron. I don't know if you will or not. But anyway, it was. Aren't they trying to ban those books in Canada? I'm not sure. Yeah. yeah. Something so, to do. They're trying to ban them. Yeah, probably. Who knows? But anyway, so it was there. I seen a bunch of little hosts in the pre I knew. See, I knew Aaron would love that. <laughs> anyway, while we were there, I were going through the gift shop and I find a book. 
based. So it, I'm, I don't remember the guy's name. I'll share the book with you guys later on. He was the oldest surviving worker who worked on uh, doing the faces and everything at Mount Rushmore. He lived to be 99 something or other. I forget exactly. Hey, Dave, I haven't seen you in here before. Dave uh, Toss or Toss or Twos. I'm not sure, but he's been reading those to my kids lately. Great to have you, Dave. So anyway, this gentleman walked right up to the the um, the base of the hit of the heads, right right around whatever it was. At seventy some years old, he would go into the gift shop at Mount Rushmore and would read his book and sign autographs to the local people until he couldn't do it anymore. And uh, he used to play, so they had a, a little baseball league there for all the players back in the I think it was the thirties and forties. He played on the team. They printed up a baseball card for him, and he would sign one and put them inside of each book. And before he passed away, he signed hundreds of them. And his wife still comes in and puts the baseball card in the book. So I bought it and brought it home with us. So Yeah, they said they started working on the Mount Rushmore when he was 17. Yes. Yeah, yeah that's right. And it was, yeah, I, it was cool. I love the history of it. It looked, I was really impressed. Weren't you hung with it? I mean, I was, because yeah. um, I had heard that it was really underwhelming. Yeah. And, uh, and unfortunately, like what we were discussing, we were going up there. It's like, it's definitely um, smaller than you think. Well, right? no, but it's, it's, uh, it's like the Hollywood effect. Sure. Oh yes, yeah. that's right. Talk about that. Yeah, what do you mean by the Hollywood effect? Well, it's the Hollywood effect. And, and basically pretty much everybody in here grew up around when we did like, you know, 80s, 90s, early 2000s, when you get that um, Hollywood effect where you see these things on movies. And they glamorize it. And they glamorize it. And you're just like, and like, especially if you, if you don't grow up in the States. Right. Like sure. a lot, because like in Canada, you know, like it just seems like it's a whole. Oh, yeah. You like think... it's like so far away and you'll never, ever, ever get there. And, um, but like they glamorize everything. And then when you finally go there, it was like, oh my, I waited my entire life to see this. Like case in point, case the in Hollywood point, Walk of Fame. Walk of Fame, the Chinese Theater, uh, the Hollywood sign. Um Hi, uh, Byron. Uh what was what that? else? Basically um, everything in Hollywood. Yeah, basically everything in Hollywood, basically everything in LA. Yep. Um, uh Santa Monica Pier. I never yeah. Yeah. Um, and then and then you get to well, even Vegas, right? Sure. Like they glamorize Vegas, and when you get there, it's something but like it's a like, cesspool, right? Yeah, it's like, and, oh, okay, they got they got a guy dressed up in a dirty Elmo costume, and another guy that <laughs> says you can kick me in the nuts for fifteen dollars, you know? Right. So, and yeah. but like it, it's I call it, and well, same with uh, well, you haven't been yet, but well, we went by it in Florida, Disney World. Sure, I have but, no interest. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, but like does, the Hollywood just glamorizes everything, and when you're a kid growing up and you see these, and you think that. You'll never ever see them. Right. Never that, that's ever. That's true. Like, As a Canadian, oh, I'll, I'll you really never, never get think there. Oh my goodness, yeah. this stuff is incredible. And I'll never, ever, ever get there. And then all of a sudden, when you go, you're just like, this sucks. Uh, Statue of Liberty, mm. uh, Empire State Building. No, I love the big buildings. No, no, I, I love them, but they're but they're overwhelming yeah. compared to what Hollywood want you to think they are and because then, they've almost created a character with them. Yeah. You know, they 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 take on this supernatural life of their own in the movie yeah right? and, it, and so. it's very it's very underwhelming and then you get to that point where like i don't know it, it yeah, just no, kind of like you still want to go you still want to go and you kind of hope in the back of your brain like okay maybe i won't be let down this time but what i but, i guess what i really enjoyed about mount rushmore is as a canadian i didn't feel let down though no it, it was, was beautiful. it was beautiful but and i i think what yeah. i enjoyed was the engineering even more than okay yeah there's some heads uh, cut into the rocks. <laughs> yeah. But what I loved, of course, what they say, I'm like, you imagine the first guy that went up here and scoted out where they were going to build the rocks. And then the next person, when they come in here and they're like, Hey, let's build this incredible monument, this whole walkway, the, just the beauty but, of it. But remember we said though, what it would have been nice if they had a thing, like a whole section and not to sound ignorant, but like with us being Canadian, Oh yeah, like, I thought it you know, been... like we, like we know who the presidents are, right? But we don't know what what they represented. Yeah. Like and we know Lincoln was the slavery, and we know George Washington was the first president. Like was we he know, in favor or against? 
Lincoln, Lincoln he yeah. was against. Oh yeah. yeah. No, I'm just being but, a smart ass. Sorry. But like we, but we know that, but I, I don't know what Teddy Roosevelt did. That was so, or Jefferson, like, I don't know that, but like if they had a huge wall with a whole representation of what they did, like that, I think that would be really good. So this but, must be the one. So we were talking to, we met a nice lady from Wyoming yes. who took our picture, which is rare in this day and age where somebody <laughs> will offer, hey, can I take your picture for you? Well, they might get COVID. COVID. Or yeah. I'm like, uh, she's like, yeah, I'm over that shit. I'm like, yeah, we've been over that for about three years. So anyway, she said there was one in Georgia that was gorgeous. So this must be the other one because they said it was the same gentleman who carved or Obviously, when they say he carved it, he designed it. But, I mean, he had all these other people doing the work for him as well. You know what was really, really underwhelming What's when that? we went? Uh, the White House. Oh, yeah. That was it so was, It was all gated off, too. But, but it was so yeah. small. You're compared like, oh, to it. hey, look at that and white shack. Like, uh, a, the, he used uh, to be pink. Abraham Lincoln statue was Oh, that yeah, was the incredible. Lincoln Memorial was incredible. That was incredible. And uh, the Vietnam yeah, the gate. What is it? The gazing pool or whatever. Yeah, that the, those those were incredible. But um, but like the, is it the Freedom Tower? The one that um, the one that replaced the World Trade Center? No, no, no. Oh the, the, no, that's the Washington, Washington Monument. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I the like one that. that's Spider Man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one. But it was underwhelming. Sure. Again, I mean, it's right? just a giant slab of rock, right? Yeah. So and that's the which thing, like, they ran out of. If you look at it, I think I or, yeah. Um, I think they ran out of, they had to change the type of rock about three quarters of the way up. If you look, the shade changes. I read about that somewhere, but anyway. Yeah, but the, but the White House, like it is what it is, but it was it was really underwhelming because mm -hmm. like in movies, they make it look like this massive structure, right? And you just get there and you're like, oh, is that yeah, all it is? Awesome. Like, I know it's a big building, but yeah. You know? yeah it was a bit, yeah. It was, yeah. You know what was the best part when we do these trips? So we try to, we try to build in. A little bit of history history but also yeah. a little bit of um what do you want time like a random time right because we weren't planning on going there but we showed up early and the night before i'm like hey let's see how far turns out that uh, cedar rapids or um rapid city is mm -hmm. like really really close <laughs> so yeah. we decided to just randomly go out and enjoy it yeah. which was way better than the hotel we stayed at so let's tell you <laughs> So we always book hotels ahead of time so that we know we get a good deal. And I'm usually pretty you good. You are pretty good. Well, you're 50-50. Yeah. No, you did good. This no. trip, this was the only one. So, guys, we show up to this hotel. And I'm going to add, Expedia really screwed me on this Yeah, because it had a good rating, right? It had a good rating. And I had saved $211 worth of Expedia points. And this hotel conveniently cost me $211 Even in Expedia though it's supposed points, to be less than that. Which... So kind of choked me a bit. But. We go in and the first thing you see is you walk by and they have a public laundry facility in there. Like mm -hmm. most hotels do where you're not public, but your people are staying there can wash their clothes, which we use. Anyway, we didn't need it that night, but I see this big sign with black tape over it closed. I'm like, okay, cool. So then <laughs> it's I, like it was the wall sign. Yeah, it was, they yeah it that's right. Over, so yeah. they had these nice fancy embroidered letters on the wall. And the one that's supposed to say laundry facilities has black duct tape over it. I thought, well, that's classy, but that, whatever, I don't care. They had it down a little bit. They had it over a couple things. Oh, yeah. yeah. I don't even know what the other stuff was. Yeah. We start going down the hallway, and about every third room is doesn't have a lock. And when I mean it doesn't, it's missing the whole fucking doorknob. Yeah. You could bend down and look right in like this. Oh, I think you could just push the Sure, doors the doors weren't that. locked. So yeah. anyway, I'm thinking, well, that's really weird. Maybe they're doing renovations. Then I go down the hall, and there's this big space where something used to be i thought well what is going on there so then we go to our room uh we go in to use the bathroom the toilet we go to flush it it overflows <laughs> we let it sit for a couple hours We're like well maybe we did something wrong and the guy's like oh no that kind of happens he goes here's a plunger okay <laughs> oh so then i go down later on the that room night was nice, though. the room was nice yes. i will give them that no problem really with the room. Big. yeah so i talked to the kid and i'm like I said, you know, I don't usually say this, but I said, this place is a bit of a dump and I'm not trying to be a dick or anything, but it really is. He's like, well, let me tell you the story. He said, my family bought it just recently. We're trying to renovate it. It used to be a rent by the week, a rent by the month kind of place. We had a lot of degenerates in here that we actually had to work really hard to get evicted. And he said, on the way out, they did a lot of damage. So we've been dealing with a lot of that. And he goes, and I know you wanted ice, but there's no ice. That big hole in the wall over there is where the ice machine used to be. Now, I didn't want to know the rest of the story other than 
it was missing. So yeah. do with that as you will. <laughs> they okay. got evicted and took the ice I machine. I think somebody got pissed off and walked out with the ice machine as well. So yeah. <laughs> anyway, the bed was recent, reasonably yeah. comfortable. Not as comfortable. The room was nice. It had a it had a jet tub in the living room or yeah. whatever the bedroom. So whatever. So it was fun. It was the worst hotel. For the record, all the years I've been traveling north and south through the states, the three worst hotels we have ever stayed at have been in the Dakotas. Two were in Fargo, and one was in Rapid City. I hope that's just some sort of weird coincidence, yeah. but it is what it is. So I wanted to go back. We got a bunch of comments here I didn't comment on yet. Uh, so Dave, good to have you. He said, usually listen to your podcast, enjoy your content, and what you do for TSP. Well, it's great to have you, sir. I always love seeing new faces. This is a bit of a different time for us to go live as well. Yeah, right? it is. So, a little bit later than we usually are. And Goofy Rufy says North by Northwest. That was the Hitchcock yep. movie I was telling you about. Um, and Aaron said, uh, Becky sunglasses. Oh, yeah. So Aaron says your sunglasses made it look like a regular road. The um, reflection in your sunglasses when we took the picture. So Aaron, the reason that is, is the picture you saw first, we stopped on the side of the road almost up to Mount Rushmore. There's a beautiful spot where you're probably not supposed to stop. And we took a selfie there. <laughs> That's why you could see a road in the reflection of her glasses. <laughs> what an astute observation, Aaron. Very good. <laughs> and Nate, you are right. He says he's much more interested in what's in the room behind the heads on Mount Rushmore. So is that some sort of conspiracy theory thing? Because I think I've heard something about that, but I don't know the whole story behind it. Um, what do we got? And uh, yeah, Snow says, what a, what a wild night. Yeah, we had, it was crazy. So to boot, I couldn't sleep that night for whatever reason. I wake up wide awake at four o'clock. We had nine hour drive the next day, which yeah. wasn't horrible, to Helena, Montana. Oh yeah, let's, let's talk about where we stopped. Anyway, so this was a good day, guys. You will appreciate this story. This is one of those situational awareness stories. Anyway, so I wake up at four, I can't sleep. So I toss and turn till about five o'clock mm -hmm. and I go, Hey, hun, hun, hey, hun. But you have to add in the fact that I didn't go to bed till midnight and I ended up taking two melatonin at 1230. Yes. I had no idea. So. And I really didn't care. <laughs> so I'm like, Hey, let's get up. She's like, what? It's like quarter after five. I'm like, let's get on the road and uh, we'll make, you know, make hay while the sun shines. So we did. We, uh, we got up at a little after five, got on the road and we ended up in, uh, Rapid City by two o'clock in the afternoon. Two thirty. Two thirty, because I couldn't sleep, and it was great. We had a great day, but um, beautiful. We we actually get to check off Wyoming because we we drove through the northeast corner. It's about twenty minutes or less. You go through. Uh, there was a lot of antelope in there for sure. You, you didn't see it, but um, you no. would you would have if you were awake. But it's fair. <laughs> I told her go to sleep and I'll drive. I don't even think I I think I don't even think I was awake going to the car. So we went through this mountainous pass. There's this one. There's about a three hour drive where you're not on the interstate. We come out. We pull into a gas station. I was I wasn't on fumes. I I had about another hundred kilometers, but I knew it was a long stretch and I'd have to. And you guys know I always talk about not pushing it any longer than you have to because you could end up having you make stupid decisions when you do that so i let it go just a little too long but not that long I finally come to a gas station that looks kind of dumpy i said let's pull in so i pull in behind this guy and he's parked there and it looks like he finished pumping put the pump back in the machine and then he kind of gives me this weird look as he walks by and i'm like what's going on all the pumps are full Nobody's pumping gas, or if anybody is, I but can't But I think tell. the weird look was because his card was sure. broken, right? So I don't know what's going on. Anyway, we end up being in a very rough area, incredibly rough, um, a place where I probably didn't necessarily belong. And as I... <laughs> um, I'm just in the store walking Yeah, around. she's walking around. <laughs> and as everybody gets out of their vehicle, they're giving me like a stink eye, and I'm getting this kind of uncomfortable vibe. I'm like, what's going on here, honey? And um, anyway, I go into the gas station. The place is a dump. Their card machines weren't working, so everybody had to go inside to pay. The guy behind the counter could give two shits whether he was there or wasn't. He was more interested in talking to the customers. Couldn't get his debit machine to work. So we were lined up at these pumps for 15, 20 minutes. We should have just went on from there. The food, anyway, it was a 
scary scenario. Uh, a little scarier than, I, I mean, I wasn't uncomfortable, but I got the vibe that people were scoping us out. And Becky I, never got it at all. No. So I grabbed her and I said, hey, you paid for your food. Let's go. And we hit the road. But, and we uh, went to the I next will place. add, though, when we got to the hotel that night, yeah. the sandwich you bought, it uh -huh. was blown up about that. It was yeah. round and it, it yeah. got a little warm. So I, yeah, I didn't but eat it one shouldn't sandwich, have done that. No. So it was, yeah, I don't even, anyway. Anybody wants to know where I stopped? I will tell you offline. Let's put it that way. I don't <laughs> yeah. want it to ever come back on me. So uh, Nate says his conspiracy theory about the heads, same as history of the land and the mountain itself before we carved the heads in them. Very, yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, well, this one was in a very um, impoverished community. It was, it was very, very rundown, and you were right. So Goofy Rufy says, got to have your head on a swivel in a gas station in the U.S. nowadays, for sure. Uh, so we went 15 minutes down the road, and we stopped into another gas station. It was a Loves. Yeah, Loves. Loves yeah. are beautiful. I love them. Anyway, <laughs> so uh, I went in and got a sandwich at, what was the, they had a Hardee's. Hardee's. And I had a great conversation with a Tennessee truck driver there. Uh, he's like, yeah, I live just next to Knoxville. And I'm like, oh, yeah. I said, I kind of know the area. And we talked for 10 minutes while they waited for my sandwich. And that was it. But it was a, an interesting, odd situation. Now, uh, as far as driving through South Dakota, um, zero to five stars would not recommend a second time. <laughs> I, I'm definitely glad that we did it. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that we finally drove um, east to west in the dakotas never done that before yeah at least south dakota and we'll never do it again no no I'm, I'm good with never going that route again there is uh something i, I forget what it, brad drug or drug anyway it was a weird town that they advertised for 300 miles like every five miles there's another sign come and see this and you felt like this was and now i'm not slamming south dakota but you guys got to hear this it reminded me of when mom and dad used to take us on family vacations in the 80s. You would drive along and you've seen this sign. Check out this town as featured in Reader's Digest. <laughs> or as featured in the pages of the New York Times. Or as featured in National Geographic. It was like, oh yeah, check out all these cool magazines that have written about our cool town. And so you think, man, this has got to be the best thing since sliced bread. And you finally come up to it and it's like, gone. Like that. Well, and same with... um when we were going to Mount Rushmore. Yes. They all piggyback the Dances with Wolves. Oh, everybody yeah. had Dances with Wolves memorabilia. But how old is that movie? Oh, thir over 30 years I old. I watched, I used to watch it at my grandma's house it on VHS. It might come out 1990, I'm not sure. But well, yeah. She had it on VHS and it was a double VHS movie because mm -hmm. it was split over two tapes. And I remember watching it at her house and she passed away in, she passed away in 90... 98 right so and she had and i watched it when i was in high school oh yeah so i don't know how old that movie's old hey yeah. hoss good to have you late 80s goofy roof he said yeah so we're heading along and then there's this restaurant that had that must have the world's largest collection of fire trucks so for like a hundred miles <laughs> every time you'd see a sign for this restaurant there's an old dilapidated fire truck park next to it. Like, I don't even know how many they own. It was insane. I counted at least 10. Yeah. Yes. And oh my God, the the stuff that I, we should have stopped and taken pictures, but yeah. there was run down mini golf places. Water slides. Water parks. slides that if you even looked at them sideways, they'd give you tetanus. Stuff that hasn't, that haven't been in operation since probably 1992 you know yeah. what i mean it was yeah because aaron says 1990 was only 10 years ago come on ain't that the truth yeah <laughs> it's it was crazy it was like going back in a time machine i enjoyed the travel through wouldn't now montana i would drive through all day montana is gorgeous but it's long sure well, yeah it is yeah. but that section after after you leave uh great falls between mm -hmm. great falls and coming toward canada that is some of the most beautiful country you'll ever see. They said there was bighorn sheep in there, but it was just beautiful. The up and the down. And, oh, it was so mm -hmm. nice. But Helena was a beautiful city. We really enjoyed that was, a yeah. lot. I, I did. Uh, oh, Andrea said, uh, we stopped at a similar gas station in Arkansas. The dude behind the counter had no idea that all his syrups were out in the soda machine and no money in the ATM either. So we <laughs> had no idea or just didn't care. <laughs> didn't give a shit would yeah. be my guess. Yeah. <laughs> Because you can tell 
that uh, this guy didn't give a shit about anything. Oh, less than a shit. Like yeah. he was. He was. He was the cashier, and he was sitting. He reminded me of your dad. Yeah, he was he just. Did. He was just sitting there, and he was just like. And as like, I mean, I, go, yeah. it's my card reader. It's my card reader. And then every time someone put the card in, he's sitting there and he's going, "Is it gonna win? Is, is it gonna, it gonna work?" Go? <laughs> every friend. and then the the poor guy that was parked in front of us, yeah, he tried six different cards oh because the card because it kept coming up declined, and he's like, "These cards aren't declined. No, like, there's nothing wrong. We'll try a different one." And then he's doing this. <laughs> I'm just like, oh my god! The whole time, just sitting there, he wouldn't even stand. And I'm just like, what is Snow Far- Snow Farms had pretty much didn't give a shit. He had multicolored hair and was in pigtails. Yeah, not so, paid enough to give a shit. <laughs> so I don't know if there was something going on with debit machines and credit machines that day, but that was the same day. So the day we were at his place, the the the, the gentleman behind the counter sitting down doing finger bang <laughs> every time that you know, it's a good win. But anyway, their machines were completely wacko. And then we drove up, I don't know, it was another hour or so we stopped at a, I, I think. Yeah, it was. And mm-hmm. I, it was when we stopped, um, I put windshield wash, washer fluid. Anyway, we go in and the guy's like, yeah, our debit machines have been down most of the day as well. So Maybe it, was it must have been something, something in that area. Yeah, it was It was weird. Yeah, but this guy, honestly, it sounded like it was a, a long-term it, problem. It's something not just, that he just doesn't care. It, it, yeah, it didn't sound like it was something that just happened that day. Okay. It's, <laughs> been an ongoing concern for quite some time it's been an ongoing concern for about six years now and we just don't give a shit because they don't pay us enough to give a shit so so as far as lessons that we learned so these are some stories but i'm trying to think of some things because every trip we always learn things that we should have or not have now we ran our dryer sheets this time right i thought we had enough and we used them all yeah but, but we, um, we bought, <laughs> we, we paid a dollar, was it? No, a, do, a dollar for two sheets. A dollar yeah. for a box of them at the hotel that had two sheets in it, which was fine. And but we did forget our laundry soap pods. We did. So but. we went and bought a thing of laundry soap, whatever. Yeah. You know, so so that was a uh, failing on ours. Uh, Maps.me worked like a charm the one time I had to use it. It was great. Just remember to preload the maps before you leave. Now, we discovered a couple of cool things. Now, you guys may know this, but... We used, okay, back up. So the entire trip, guys, I have told you this maybe before. When I went down last year, down to Prepper Camp in North Carolina and drove all the way back, I used the GPS on my phone. And I had that stupid little holder that held it up there. And it was really small <laughs> and it was hard to hear because when I hooked up Bluetooth, the GPS wouldn't show up. Well, guess what we discovered this time, guys? When you plug your phone into the USB in the glove box, it auto-populates CarPlay on your screen. Oh, mind equals blown, How, which was fucking incredible. So we were able to use GPS on our screen in our truck the entire trip. And we read, listened to the entire book of One Second After. And I got another 15 hours in on Atlas Shrug. So... Uh, which you well, you, you were in the middle of, so you didn't really know much about it. But yeah. so I've got six hours left, guys. So it's uh, I am enjoyed. I enjoyed it. So we learned that uh, Maps.me is a great offline, only requires GPS. We didn't have any troubles with our tech this time, did we? We no, no, my phone was perfect. We called ahead to make sure they would know. Yeah. Um, a few times, credit cards wouldn't work at pumps. If you tried to do the tap and the tap didn't work. We had a lot of problems with our tap. Yeah. And I think that was because. The, that's just a Canadian American thing. Yeah. yeah no big that's... deal. So another reason to travel with multiple credit cards like we do. Mm-hmm. Because, and cash. Yeah. And cash. Oh, definitely cash. Yeah. We always try to. Now we got yeah, some American cash for the next trip. But yeah. definitely have cash on hand. Uh, what else, baby? Um, mm-hmm. We. What did we do? We can't. Oh, the 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 folding solid tonneau cover, the box cover for the truck was a great investment. Oh yeah, you're going to do a review on. That. I am going to do a review on that because that the reason we bought it was to give us peace of mind when we traveled, and that's exactly what it did. Before I would always have the cloth one, and you'd think, well, some crackhead who wants something more than me is either going to cut it, flip it off, whatever. Because it's just velcro. Right, it's just velcro. You could actually get your fingers in under it if it was a bad day. Yeah, or a good day for that matter. <laughs> and uh, so we we got this folding rigid one that locks into place that you can't get at unless you um, open up the tailgate. 
So we're able to leave, you know, some valuables in there overnight. Yeah. It also helped because we're confident in putting our suitcases back there. So basically we just kept the little bit of stuff we needed, like water bottles and bag right there that we could grab. And then everything else went into the tailgate every morning. We just left the spot there and it worked great, didn't it, babe? Yeah. And you should do a review on these suitcases. They're awesome. They're they came from Amazon. They're uh, Shoku. Shoku. S-H-O. No, S-H-O-W-K-O-O. S-H-O-W-K-O-O. We bought uh, a set for each member of the family. They're the four wheels, and they've held up incredibly well. Yeah, they have the hard sides. Yeah. And, yeah, I took it. I took them to Europe, and I was actually going to tell you to do a review on them because they're incredible. Yeah, I love them. That was we. I mean, with all yeah. the traveling we do, we needed something rigid like that. So... Uh, just as I pulled in here today, I got an email from the uh, from Batrix, the company, the CEO who talked to me earlier, wants to do another collaboration video. So I'm working with him on those, you know, the little credit card batteries. That's going to be pretty exciting. I'm pretty yeah. happy about that. Tell him that he said that uh, oh, he's, you're knowing around the world. Yeah, now. he said literally he's had contacts from around the world based on that stupid viral video from TikTok. How crazy was that? Yeah. So, yeah. And we came up with the idea for the truck. Yes. So we are going to, by the time you guys see the truck at the next live event, which will be, so the next time I'll be down south of here, it may end up being, as long as the dates stay the same, the fall Midwest Festival in Kansas. And we're going to have uh, Tool Man Tim Deckles put on the truck. So mm -hmm. we're going to, yeah. Our codes and our yeah. website. And everything, yeah. Website, so. Lightning. We, we talked that out while we were driving today. Uh, let's see. Did we have what else did we run into? Anything? Oh, the batteries. Yeah. So no, yeah, I think stop with the, the Batrix batteries. I think. Yeah. Yeah. So we're gonna see if we can get some custom ones made, and also I'm gonna see what I can work out with them for. Um, oh, and your silver codes. Oh, uh, yeah. I was gonna announce that on my first on our first. Well, whatever. Anyway. Yeah, so it's fine. So the. <laughs> Brian Alexevich, you don't are, shoot me. Yeah, I already did mention it. it a little bit. Yeah, so you already did. we have another run of silver coming up here soon. I'll have some um, mock-ups pretty quick for you to see them. And I'll release pricing, availability, all of that. You and, did say it last time. Yeah, I did. Then, You're right. Yes, yeah, yeah. So, we, I guess, no, so, I, guess so I didn't let any cat out of the bag. Oh, you already no, mentioned it's fine. It. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah, and I guess I did mention the, uh, yeah, there's Brian. <laughs> and I did mention the workshop workshop as well. Yes. Even better news, folks. So as of May 11th, there is no longer any requirement at the U.S. border for any certain medical procedures at all. It's a wonderful thing. So eventually they finally decided to get line, back lined up. So for anybody that that's a concern for, You'll be able to travel freely to and from. Apparently, for a long time, Americans have been able to re-enter America anyway. But in case it was a concern, it's no longer a concern. The only thing you'll need to come to Canada is a passport or a um, passport card. Yes. So if you have one of those, you can come up here. But anyway. Yeah, come on up for our workshop. Yes, on... we would love that. August 4th? August 5th and 6th, I think. Yeah, I think it's going to be 4th through 7th, basically. It'll be... Yep. Uh, the two main days will be 5th and 6th. It's going to be fun. Uh, I, don't, I think I mentioned it, but Nicole Sauce is coming up to speak, so that's going to be awesome. We're working on some more guests behind the scenes. Chris Dixon will be here. I'll be here. Mrs. Cook will be here. Yeah. Uh, Greg from the Apocalypse Preparedness School. I'm going to try, gonna gonna try to talk Barrett into Well, he doesn't know that yet, but we'll we No, will. if he's yeah. on the... I don't, he usually watches mm -hmm. Barrett. Poor Nate needs a passport. I understand. Get a passport. It sucks. <laughs> I... I Years ago, when it's they, actually probably a lot quicker for them to get their passports than it is us. It could be because mm -hmm. years ago when they made it mandatory, I remember reading. Um, I'll add you to the list, Nate. Nate says in for silver. Sounds good, brother. That makes me excited. Night, Brian. He says I got to go to sleep. Catch you later. Great. To and uh, you, I know, I know. Goofy Rufy says it used to be we didn't need one to go between Canada and the U.S. As of 2008, uh, it became a thing, and that yeah. was. That was the U.S. who forced Canada's hand at the time. Yeah, because sucked. when I was a kid, I lived on a border Never town needed it. with Michigan. I know. And we went over, I think all you had to do was show your birth certificate. Yep. And and my if my dad was driving, he just had to show his driver's license. It was something like, uh, yeah. yeah. So uh, I Most of the time, it was just like, where are you born? Where are you going? How long are you going to be? That's They didn't really. Absolutely. 
Dave says, awesome. I've been waiting to take a job up there for a few years with my agency. Couldn't because of the shot. Well, brother, you're going to be able to now. So, yeah. <laughs> and Haas, I agree with you. I'm not, I'm not going to read that one out loud, but I, I agree with you. So, yeah. <laughs> and uh, Nate says, post office for one hour a week. Got to make an appointment. Oh, wow. To, to do the, yeah, where they live for the, the passports. It can be a real pain. Passports are not fun. Once no, you get them, though, you know they're what, easy. Though, but ours were held back again because they went on strike. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Because so, government... yeah, I don't even know how backdated they are. And when we went for our passports for England, yeah, I applied for, because the girls have to have theirs every five years because of their age. Right. We went, I applied for their passports in June, and I got them in October. Yeah, it took that's, a while. That's how long it took from June to October because they were backlogged because of COVID and all that. It was ridiculous. It was awful. Yeah. Any, I was trying to, I will make a more comprehensive list and do a follow-up on Saturday evening for you, but I wanted to get what was fresh on our mind before we got, once we got off the road, because I knew mm-hmm. once we got off, we, we if, if we didn't do a live stream to drop in and chat with you guys, we probably would have uh, fallen asleep and not thought about it, hey? Yeah, I'm tired. But yeah, we're so I'm going to say there won't be a live stream tomorrow night because we're going to be just getting home probably that it's, time. And it's the girl's birthday. It's the girl's birthday. So our little girls who are twins, become teenagers tomorrow. They're 13. Mm-hmm. So happy birthday to Alice and Charlotte out there. If they're listening, we found it. Oh, poor Allie's sick. Allie's got the flu. So we're going to get home <laughs> and see her tomorrow. We've got a few more things. We'll have a bunch. I may even, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. I got some ideas for Saturday night's live stream. But here's the deal, guys. Saturday night, if you happen to notice, um, the podcast while I was away weren't numbered. That was on purpose so that the first episode back in the workshop studio is going to be episode number 300 so saturday night will be episode 300 it'll be a lot of fun i'm going to put together uh some good information for you guys we've got a bunch of different things i want to talk about a couple more announcements and yeah other than that i think that's it for this evening isn't it mrs Mm -hmm. cook yeah it's been a good episode um oh Andrea said, the one time we went to Canada was in college. We got lost and had to change in our travel van and end up getting our asses kicked because we played the Canadian National. Every girl was over six feet tall. <laughs> oh, poor Andrea. <laughs> Actually, it's kind of true because um, our girls play basketball. And some of the girls on their team or in um, opposing teams, they're like in grade nine and some of them are close to like five foot 10, five foot 11. And it's like, I don't know where these kids and our, and I thought Alice was tall. Oh yeah. And these girls are just Way tower. Tall. I know. Yeah. And uh, that's okay. Nate, Nate says, won't be home. Catch a replay. That always good brother. Great to have you. So we're going to call it a show tonight, guys. I know we're a little short tonight, but I always have a commitment that you guys, I'm going to have something up here every single Thursday for you. And I wanted to just share the last of our stories from the road trip. Cause we had a hell of a lot of fun. Thanks for doing this journey with us. It um, It's not difficult. You just have to make time to mm-hmm. create content when you're traveling. So, And the workshop delinquents mean enough to us. Oh, I don't know if I mentioned this to you guys or not, but we came up with a name for Tennessee property, and it's go, It's called the Workshop Gully. So that's the name in case anybody wants Slide. to know. Uh, comma delinquent delinquent gully yeah so <laughs> delinquent gully for the delinquents <laughs> so we got two and a half hours yeah. tomorrow once we get our shopping done here in the city picking up some stuff so guys i appreciate you we'll see you saturday night live from the workshop studio it'll be great to be back we've missed you even though we've been here but it's not the same without having the time to put in a real show for you so thanks for sticking with us we'll catch you on saturday night and as always stay happy stay healthy and have a great week.